So, so when I bought this bike, making a Steve Pete replica bike absolutely wasn't my intention. And I've only just remembered why I came up with the idea. And a few months ago, Orange reposted one of my pictures of the, the orange when it was purple. And I got the notification, clicked it, went to their story. And then the next story was a picture of Steve Pete riding that bike. And I thought, ah, I'm sure I've got somewhere this old Dirt magazine with this amazing article about this bike. And that's where the idea came from. So thanks, Orange. Orange have been great. Mm -hmm. They're always reposting all my things and sharing and commenting. Even when it's a bit negative, they're getting there. Really like Orange. They own their problems and... They can take a joke. Yeah, they can take a joke. <laughs> Unlike some fucking bike companies. <laughs> well, I've got hundreds of old magazines in the UK somewhere and then when I was back in February this year I picked them all up and luckily I did happen to pick this one up. Uh, yes I went to all the magazines in the house found this one and yeah it's a great magazine and it's from November December 2002 and I remember Steve Pete racing world champs in Caprun. He turned up on a silver bike, Nico turned up on a gold bike Pete took home a silver medal, he's 17th one or however many he got, and Nico took his 10th. I think that might be Nico's last 10th gold medal, and then I think he retired after that. No fact checking please on this video. <laughs> no, no people checking the facts, this is all freestyle. So, this old Dirt magazine, this amazing iconic picture of Pete on the front. This mag, I must have read. Pete's in there again, second content page. 2002, this is like pre pre-internet days for me. There's no bike stuff online back then, isn't it again? <laughs> well, his ass is in it on the 10th page, third, third image. First bit of sexism. Disgusting, this needs to stop. So yeah, when I was a kid, 2002, I was 16. And at the time I had an orange 222, which I stripped and polished all the way back then. I think I just did it, because back then, we were doing uplift days in the UK and races all the time. And the bikes were always just put in the trailers and they get absolutely trashed all the time. Yeah, I've seen So like, lot. you go to like three uplift days or three races and you'd have to completely, completely fucking repaint your bike. You don't see that many home paint jobs. It's probably because you can't get a bike that lasts more than a month without cracking. So you never <laughs> need to repaint them. So yeah, back to the magazine. Petey in it again. Page 14. Petey on Royal. Back then, Pete, he was just everywhere, and he was the top guy. And if you're from the UK, riding orange, yeah, he was my absolute hero. Pete again, World Cup winner, orange advert, Yorkshire born and bred, just like Steve Pete. Still made in Halifax 20 years later. Orange, great brand, never sold out, never exported to the Far East. Maybe some of their bikes with normal tubes made there, but all the folded metal tube bikes made in Halifax. And another thing I like about Orange, they just keep sticking to what they know, what they believe in. They're never trying to patent something new. Yeah, they're not into trends, they just do what they think, get on with it. And if people don't like it, they don't care, they just carry on. Yeah, here we go. Nico Vios, 10 times winner. 10th one, beat PT at Capron, and then he retired, I think, at age 25, which is insane. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Pete carried on for another 15 years. Right, so Pete, another... When did he win World Champs? 2000 and... Was it eight? Eight? Nine. Eight or nine, nine yeah. yeah. There he is again, polished bike, with these stupid, massive X-Lite handlebars, which was the reason why I bought these stupid, really tall, stooge motor bars, partly because I wanted a, another handlebar with good back sweep, but it also had this ridiculous rise, which I thought was a good, a good, a good thing. PE, the polished chrome helmet to match the bike, and the silver medals. <laughs> He's got an obsession with silver things. Uh, I think he had a gold helmet and a gold medal. I don't know if anyone knows the story about this, but I can't remember Steve or Mike Rose told me when I was working at Dirt Magazine for a short while, just before they disappeared. Waiting for a title is what people would put in a magazine if they haven't decided on the title. The space filler before it goes to print. And I think they just forgot, or the proofreader, thought that was the title because he was literally waiting for a title still waiting for a world champs title and that was like a mistake i think but turned out to be the perfect 
title for for the article. Interesting little little fact. There he is again, Steve Pete, last corner coming into Caprun for that second. And yeah, Caprun World Champs. And what I did plan to do with this bike was build it and go to Caprun and ride it in Caprun <laughs> 20 years exactly after I watched my hero losing in Caprun. Um, but then we sort of changed that plan. I did ask Steve if he had a kit to donate, uh, but he didn't have any spares. He only had one, or only has one left. And he does still have the original bike. So Steve, if you want to do a ride in Morsey in the summer with the original bike versus a custom bike, let me know. I'm sure Santa Cruz won't be happy with that. But if you want to do something, that could be fun. Yeah, fucking great magazine. Great shots. Iconic. <laughs> Yeah, I must have. Yeah, skin suit. I must have watched this. Uh, I must have read this fucking millions of times. There he is again. Oh, Designed man. to win. Well, I came second, didn't you, mate? So sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. It's like <laughs> Steve Pete is a World Cup champion. And knock your thirty-three ten. Yeah. Ah, sorry. He did win that year. Sorry, I take it all back. He did win the overall that year because he won in Leger on the black. Is he on the black and yellow bike? Black and red bike? That was bike? Fort William, wasn't it? It wasn't 2002 Leger, it wasn't at the crash. No, because that was no, my champ. That, that was 2004. Champ. But in 2002, he won the overall World Cup, I think. Well, yeah, this seems to suggest, we'll have to check, that Steve Pete is a World Cup champion, 2002. World and he Cup, got second. World, yeah. That was when he was, like, absolutely at the top of his game, but just couldn't beat Nico on his gold bike. There he is again. Gold colour. Yellow gold. I'm going to stop going on about That's the silver medal. Oh yeah, here we go. Round five, Leger, 7th of September. Again, after the lifts closed, which is when they love to have a race. Uh, and he won on the silver and black bike. Yeah, he won on the silver and black bike. Number one in the rankings. And I think he won the final round. Steve Jones, now at GMBN. For reformed alcoholic Steve Jones, he looks pretty drunk there. And here it is, this is the article, which inspired by Orange's Instagram post. I went and found this article, read it again, and I was like, ah, I should do this. I can make this into a replica. We didn't plan to make an exact replica. We just sort of freestyled it and made it up along the way. So yeah, stripping the paint off was easy. We got slick graphics. I did actually contact Whittaker Signs if they can make some graphics and I didn't reply. I don't know if they're still in business or they're whichever. Original, yeah, they used to make the original site. Um, Whittaker Signs used to make all the original graphics for PE and the dude's van and the Royal Racing team bikes, all that stuff. This is a really interesting article because if you go back and read it, there's a lot of interesting sort of tips and tricks in there about um, about making fast bikes, no grease in the hubs, slow spoke tensions, custom tuned suspension, all these things. That some of the things in there are like the world forgot for 20 years and like we're sort of coming back to them now, coil, coil swung suspension, front and rear. And it's like some ways, and a few of these other dirt magazines, if you read back, it's like a lot of these guys had the answer 20 years ago and then we've gone down a rabbit hole with different technology or air shocks or these different things and everyone slowly 20 years like relearned or going back to these things so yeah i think we've done a pretty good job considering we didn't plan it at all I contacted Whittaker science they didn't get back to me i think the guy now has a youtube channel joe joe's bikes and he makes really cool interesting bikes go and check him out nice channel he does have a video where he rebuilds an original one of these which is probably the one that steve has now got in his house on the wall, I guess. Or Sorry. maybe not on the wall, maybe just chucked in the basement with all the other silver medal bikes <laughs> in a pile. Uh, I've got to stop bullying them about the silver medals, bless him. How many silver medals do you have? None. <laughs> <laughs> I did get 13th at the Masters World Champs last year, so that, not even near, not even near getting a silver medal at the Old Man Race. So then I contacted Slick Graphics, who I remember in the past we were making a lot of custom graphics for other orange teams in the UK 
and other bike teams. Yes, Slick Graphics did me a great favour. They did these replica graphics and sent them all for free. I tried to pay, you wouldn't take any money. So yeah, we got these custom graphics. Unfortunately, only one set and we had a little bit of trouble with the installation. I've never really installed any graphics ever before, nor was Matt, so it's not perfect, but we're doing the best we can. It still looks absolutely great. So yeah, really interesting article, and it wasn't planned to be an exact replica of the bike. The idea was to make a modern replica of this bike, which has all the good modern stuff, good geometry, bigger wheels, better brakes, dropper post. We've got the anomaly thing. This has turned from a downhill bike into what I think and what Matt thinks as he's been riding it. This is our favourite bike. Absolutely love this bike. It's a downhill bike that can do everything. Done 40k enduro rides on it, down all days, just keeps going. So yeah, I wanted to make a modern, a modern replica that sort of had the same feel and look, but is a, a modern, fantastic handling, useful downhill bike, or useful mountain bike that you can use in any situation. So yeah, we've got the frame colour, we've got the stickers, we didn't get the rear end painted because it seemed a waste of time and money when this frame has got a tiny crack in it, which to be fair, the crack's not getting worse. Yeah, Matt's given it a polish. Our first attempt at polishing the bike. Got a pretty bloody good finish. How many hours? How many hours? Too many. Too many. Um, it's done two, two full days, haven't you? Yeah. First attempt at polishing the frame. We've got a few other frames that we plan to polish in the future. So sort of a good test run. It's quite hard to polish an old frame that's already got a lot of sort of deep scratches in it. So yeah, sort of a test run. But yeah, we've got the black boxer, which we swapped from the white common sal. What else? We've got the tall bar. We don't have an X-Lite stem. We've got, we've got modern Hope Tech 3 brakes with a V4 caliper. And we've got the new old school funky lightning rotor. We've got the silver DRC wheels. Pull the stickers off because it looks nice with no, no stickers. We've got amazing suspension on this bike. Progressive coil springs front and rear from race only. And Nigel damping, which is friggin' amazing. PT back then had custom built suspension, black box suspension from Tyrone from the Unicorn factory who did the suspension for the Radon 20 years ago. He was building PT suspension, so that's a good, interesting little connection there. NSR Racing, Nigel Suspension Reeve, Nigel Suspension Reeve Racing. NSR Racing, not sure exactly, I should check. I text him every bloody day, I should know what that means. Sorry, Nigel. Well, I first met Nigel in Morzine, 2005, maybe. Been great friends ever since. Nigel was Nathan Rennie's mechanic, then Stevie Smith's mechanic. And I think Nigel was an integral part of getting Stevie to the level that you got to. And yeah, it must be some of the best suspension in the world. It's really hard to describe to people how good that suspension is. It's... Angelic. Yeah, it's got everything you want. We're running loads of sag. It's got tons of low speed support. Tons of high speed support, can't bark me out. It's friggin' amazing. You can't describe to people how good it is. And despite having all the support, it's really supple, really smooth, so little feedback through the frame. The fork on this bike is probably better than, well, I'm gonna guess the fork and the shock on this bike from Nigel is probably better than every fork on the World Cup circuit that isn't a fork that has his stuff in it. And a lot of it, a lot of the bikes on the World Cup circuit do have his stuff on it. Because after he went from Stevie Smith, he then became Mark Wallace's mechanic for Canyon. And I think he was doing the suspension for all the Canyon bikes. Now he's left Canyon, moved back to Tasmania. He set up a new suspension workshop in Tasmania. So if you're down under, get in touch with Nigel, buy your suspension from him. Guaranteed, fantastic results. I know a couple of my followers have bought kit from him and they're really happy with it, so yeah. Top recommendations at the moment for suspension, Nigel or Rulesman, if you're in Europe, or get Rulesman. If you're the other side of the world, get Nigel stuff. Don't bother with anything else. So back to the bike, Max's tires. <laughs> Mini and DHF is still the same tire as it was back then, great tire. We've gone for Asagai's because I could not get any. 29, downhill, super tacky, Minions in time. So yeah, similar tyres. We've got, yeah, dropper post with the anomaly switch grade thing so we can ride absolutely anywhere. We've got the stupid tall handlebar. We've got black boxer 
custom tuned, absolute top of the line suspension. The same as Petey had, absolute top of the line, groundbreaking suspension 20 years ago. So yeah, what's left? Drivetrain. I did try and get someone to make me a copy of one of these MRPs. I asked uh, Works Components if they could do it, and they could do it, but not to fit the O-chain. And I think the O-chain is an integral part of the bike. Single pivot, I ride flat pedals, O-chain reduces pedal kickback and helps some other aspects of the bike handling. So we had to go for the O-chain. Couldn't get XCR cranks to fit the O-chain in the bottom bracket. So went hope. Can't go wrong with the hope cranks. O-chain and an oval ring for better pedaling efficiency, I believe. Or this suits my riding. We're always running an oval chain ring now. I just prefer overall better performance. So yeah, we don't have the big, the massive, that must have been a 44 tough chain ring back then, with tiny cassette, which everyone was running massive chain rings back then for these super high speed tracks like Caprun. Watching the race there, the speed tucking for ages, pedaling, like spinning out in hardest gear, just super fast, super long tracks back then. I think that was the track where Nico timed pedaling versus speed tucking discovered that speed tucking was faster than pedaling and I think he won the race because he tucked where PT and everyone else was pedaling. Saving energy as well. Saving energy, yeah. Tucking at certain points where you can't really get a benefit from pedaling and then saving their energy to pedal in the more important points. And this is something that you see all the time, people pedaling in places where I don't think they should be pedaling and they're, lo they're actually losing time. And a great quote from Fabian Burrell, the biggest mistake of the average rider is thinking you need to pedal to go faster because there's so many other ways to generate speed than pedaling on the downhill track. It's not just about pedaling, it's about the whole package. Conserving energy here, using energy there. Yeah, tucking, carrying speed, pumping. Back to the drivetrain. PE, Dura Ace, Road Derailleur back then with a little tiny cassette. We've gone for the absolute latest, most modern tech SRAM Access 12 speed. We also got the MPM Tech Duelu cage just because I wanted it to be more silver and look more like the Dura Ace. And I went for the Garbrook 12 speed cassette, which is made in Ukraine, I think. Ukra yeah, I think it's made in Ukraine. Super nice cassette, super nice detail, looks beautiful. I'm pretty sure it's cheaper than all the SRAM options, GX and above. I think it's like four or five hundred for XX1 in gold or silver or <laughs> petrol and I think that was 208 euros so cheap compared to the SRAM ones and silver chain to match but yeah I'm pretty really happy unbelievably happy we've done a pretty bloody good job I think considering we didn't plan it at all so yeah great article and great bike really happy with what we managed to do here considering it was completely made up as we went along a few little details aren't perfect but yeah overall it's a great replica of Petey's bike from 20 years ago. I'm also gonna make a replica article of this article for Hurley Burley magazine. Again, James McKnight, one of my best friends. He's the owner of Miss Spent Summers and Hurley Burley, who, who we were racing together back then all the time. Yeah, back when we were 16, 17, 18, racing together, going off traveling around Europe together, racing. Great friend. James also worked at Dirt Magazine for some years until, it, until just before it ended then set up his own misspent summers, go and check them out. Great guys, they're still creating great paper media, mountain bike annuals, Hurley Burley is a downhill yearbook annual and they have the EWS World Stage, which is the EWS annual. The next Hurley Burley should have a replica article <laughs> about the replica bike, which should be very interesting to read, hopefully. Yeah, let's carry on. Let's see if there's any more PT in the magazine. Ooh, here we go. hang on. Hope M4 disc brake. Full brake, pads, lever, hose, caliper, all fixings, 135 quid. <laughs> How much are the tech fours? 350 each? It's also hilarious that all the stores were advertising on paper with all the prices. Now you're, just, now you're just clicking. How much was the top spec? Oh, as a boxer. 800 quid. Actually, that boxer price, 719. Well, 800 reduced to 719, 2003 model, pre-reduced <laughs> before it's even out. Oh, and that oh, was a the box of World Cup with the gold legs. Ooh. Tashima. 
Um, I don't think it was Kashima. I think it was. I think back then there was steel legs, which are obviously too heavy and unrideable. Even though motocross bikes use them all, and it's probably a better idea. Steel legs with tie nitride coating. Well, uh, yeah, sorry. Boxer team seven nineteen. Boxer World Cup nine two nine, or thousand pounds. Uh, so basically, rock shocks haven't price hasn't gone up. Quality's probably gone down loads. <laughs> Hope has probably gone up in quality and also gone up in price. Here he is again, fucking Petey's ass, second time. And this was a red bike with the same graphics and stuff. Is that, there? Is that someone else? That's Stu Thompson. Stu Thompson was a really good racer who's now cut media and he does a lot of Danny McCaskill's big, yeah, big things. Him, he was, that's an interesting story. He was really good, like one of the top riders in the country. And he twisted his ankle playing basketball, didn't break the skin or anything, somehow got infected. Had to have massive surgery, cutting out like tons of gunk out of his foot, but ended his career. Twisted ankle, didn't even break the skin, got a infection, basically ended his bike career. Then he got into filming, and then now he's the Danny McCaskill Cut Media uh, Productions, making you yeah, amazing stuff. Petey again sends it. Day in his body armour, I remember we all running these suits. I remember riding in Morzine in the summer in just the suit, and it's too hot to wear any kit. And, uh, actually another friend from the same time Alex Evans who now works at Bike Radar there's an amazing picture of him hucking into the 10% in a full suit backpack on and he's like halfway down 10% Can like full pencil <laughs> like this, backpack on full day in his body armour and he's jumped if you've been to 10% on plenty it's gnarly and he's jumping like 10 metres down it, and he's like 4 metres off the ground I have to find that photo Back then, we used to just do laps and laps and laps of plenty and just huck everything every time, hit all the bumps as fast as we could, like race mode. And it was definitely cracking fewer bikes back then than we are now, barely riding them and going really slow. Dave Wardell, he's a bit of a legend. Steve Geel, Martin Murray. Martin Murray now runs... Yeah, Martin Murray. I used to ride trails with him and Stephen, his brother, in the UK when I was a kid. Stephen Murray, unfortunately, paralysed at the Mountain Dew Tour. Remember the first guy to do a double backflip, first guy to do a 360 backflip. Wow. He used to come to the, my local trails and ride. Or oh, whatever, uh, our local trails. And uh, Stephen paralyzed, unfortunately, from the neck down. Martin now runs Rocky Mountain Distribution in the UK, I think. And I think he's also part of Petey's, Petey's bike products nowadays. Is there a price of downhill bikes? Four grand? Yeah, top of the line, giant downhill team, 3,900. Might have done it Rocky Ma uh, Mountain Cycle San Andreas, 1395. I guess that's just the frame. Matt Hoffman, Pro BMX2. I used to have that. I used to play that for hours and hours. Presenting Sam Hill. This was just before Sam Hill blew up and became the legend that he the is. Legend that he is. Neil Donoghue, uh, GMBM presenter, the same as Steve Jones, who used to work, who used to make Dirt Magazine. I think that's Mark Beaumont, mm -hmm. when he was on Royal, Royal Racing, but just modelling, modelling for Dirt Mag. Nico on his yellow bike, gold bike, with his World Champs jersey, gold bike, gold medal. That's all you need to do, boys. That's the key, the key to winning World Champs. Turn up, turn up with the right coloured bike. Really Fucking that. sexist. This is disgusting. Yeah, yeah disgusting. Mm. Titanium, titanium BMX frame, 300 quid. Sprung video, Sprung 5. What a great, great film. I think half of the people who are going to be watching this, bloody kids, young, and not even know what a magazine bastards. is. The way, yeah. Literally, print that out with your name, and, cut that out, put your name and address in, write your credit card number on it, <laughs> <laughs> sign it. Sign it and send it off. Specialised big hit. I had one of those. That was uh, the one with the 24 inch back wheel, I think. The original mullet. Yeah. One of the original mullets, yeah. Steve Pete again, World Cup champion. Hadley Hubs. I really wanted to order some Hadley Hubs because you can still buy them. And yeah, Northwest Mountain Bike Centre. That was Andy Kiffin, who was Pete's mechanic. And I'm pretty sure that shop is still run by Andy nowadays. Adverts. 
the original pink bike buy and sell. Cut your, make your advert, send it into Dirt by the post, and they would put you a little, and they'll make you a little advert, and you could uh, put your phone number in, and people would call you. <laughs> How old school is that? That's it, the whole thing. Classic Dirt magazine. Less yeah, that's enough waffle about the magazine. Let's finish off getting the bike built, and yeah, I'm really excited to see this thing finished.